Today we are building a £6,000 gaming slash video editing workstation PC and this machine is going to be the best of the best designed for Kevin Talbot, another YouTuber in the RC world. If you haven't seen his content before guys, take a look down in the description box, I'll put a link there, take a look at his channel. Anyway, on with the build, let's go. So the case in this build is the Fractal Design Define 7 and the reason I chose this is because it's so modular. It gives you so many options for your storage, for your cooling and for the actual design of your cable management. So for me, this is really important because this is an expensive computer, I want it to look really good. And you can see that all the panels come off and you can clean the dust filters, which keeps it running nice and clean. And when you're first designing the layout of your PC, you really need to think about how it's going to be cool. So in this machine, we're removing the existing fans and replacing with these really efficient Noctua fans. Now I'm going to have air drawn in from the back and air drawn in from the front. And then the processor's cooler is going to blow all of that hot air out of the top of the case. So we're working on the TRX 40E gaming motherboard. So let's get everything out of the box and then look at the processor. This is the first Threadripper processor I've ever had the chance to work with. It's the 3970X, it's a 32 core 64 thread processor and it's an absolute beast. It draws 280 watts and also the packaging is fantastic. And these processors come with their own tool so you can open the socket, put the CPU in and then lock it back down again. And the cool thing is this tool has a torque limiter so you can't over tighten the screws. We're installing the memory onto the board. We've got four modules to install onto the eight DIMMs. Now we're actually gonna put this into dual channel configuration. If we had more modules, we could put it into quad channel. You won't really notice much of a difference between dual channel and quad channel configurations. However, if you do install the memory incorrectly, you may sacrifice some performance to do it right. And it's time to install some NVMe drives. Now Kev has gone for three NVMe's and one SATA SSD. All of these drives are Samsung. The two that you're seeing on the screen right now are super fast 980 Pros. These are brand new to the market, PCI Express 4.0, and they're both 500 gigabytes each. These will be used as a boot drive and a scratch drive. And then the third NVMe drive goes into this unusual place just here, next to the power for the board as a bracket that holds it into place. We have an exciting job next. We've got to set up the water cooler for the processor. And this only fits the TR4 socket. So we've got to install the three fans onto that water cooler. And then we've got to sort the wiring out for power and for the RGB lighting. And I think because the instructions were so helpful, it made it a really fun process. <laughs> and it might have been fun, but you wouldn't have laughed if you seen how many times I'd had to take the cooler in and out of the PC just to make sure everything was aligned. So I trial run it a few times, I took it in and out, put the board in and out, and you'll see this in the video. And I wanted to get this just right so it looks amazing. One of the most tedious jobs with any PC build is the cable management, and I must have spent 20 minutes getting these cables through to the back. <laughs> it's always worth it because look at the side of the case you can actually see really clean already all right exciting times let's get the motherboard installed into the case you can see i've removed the water cooler to get access to some of the screws and after this we can look at installing the fourth ssd which is the sata drive it sits on the back behind the board here and then it just slots back into place we just do the screw up and you guessed it, it's time to reinstall the radiator again. <laughs> it's about time we started to power this system. So my biggest concern for this was, would 850 be enough? And do you know what? I think, yeah, it should be fine. We'll find out later on how this gets on, but I'm pretty certain it'll be okay. Also, this power supply has multi-rail support and it's modular, so you can plug in only the cables you require. The funny thing about these cases is you have to put the power supply in from the back rather than from the side. But hey, it works, so let's fasten it into place. Time to get screwing. <laughs> so what I'm doing here is applying thermal compound. And what this does is it helps the processor's heat to escape and transfer from metal to metal. You can see me here spreading it so it's nice and even. So when that copper plate touches the processor, it gives you even coverage and better heat dissipation. Guys, we're getting closer. So now I'm installing and plugging all the cables into the board where they need to go. This is everything from the front panel switches to the fan connector, to the USB, to the audio. And you'll see me looking at the manual from time to time just to check I'm plugging things in the right places. 
So guys, if you didn't know, at the time of filming, there is a huge graphics card GPU shortage, and they're very hard to come by. So all the prices have been massively inflated. Would you believe this card alone cost over two thousand pounds? Let's install this whopper into the case, and it really was a two-man job. The bracket underneath supports the GPU to stop droop. It's a very power-hungry card, it takes three 8-pin power connectors. But do you know what? It looks bloody good. So we're very nearly finished guys, I've got to do some cable management around the back. You can see me just cable tying bits together. And just because you can't see it, doesn't mean it isn't there. So why not make an effort and make it look half decent at least. It looks absolutely beautiful. Yeah, I'm really happy with this, and I'm hoping the customer really likes it too. And of course, I've got to put the back panel for the case back on the side. Five hours later, the PC's built and it's ready to be switched on for the very first time. So the great news is the machine booted fine, we've enabled the extreme memory profile, and we've also tweaked the fan settings. Now we know this machine's gonna run hot because it's running that thread ripper. So I wanna tweak those fans so they ramp up and down correctly. Now we need to stress test this system to ensure stability. So we're going to run Prime 95 and we're going to run MSI's Combustor. And we're going to run that for about an hour. And if it survives okay, we can hand over to the customer, rest assured the system is stable. So this is quite toasty right now. All right, that is the stress test complete. It's been about an hour. We've seen 80 degrees on the processor and 80 degrees on the GPU. That is fairly warm, but this is unusual circumstances. You're not going to be stressing your machine out like this um, at 100% utilization for an hour. Enjoy your new 4K video editing setup, Kev. You have to bear in mind that the machine like this is kind of one of a kind. It's a workstation setup, so not many people will buy a, a Ryzen Threadripper processor with 128 gig of RAM and then a 3090 graphics card, and then all that fast storage as well, combined into a beautiful case. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and as always, I will see you next time. Bye.